welcome back to the Gratitude Project YouTube channel. I'm so happy that you're here joining me in my home office so I can talk to you guys a little bit about gratitude and positivity and creating the best life possible that you can have without actually changing anything at all. So today I want to talk to you about memories the memories that we create, whether they be long or short term, and how they affect the way we live, the way we think, and our own moods most of the time. So this is a story about a mother and her son, but it in no way relates only to parents. So whether you have a child or no child, I think it's worth hanging on to this video for a little bit longer to get to the end because I promise you it's super juicy and you will totally relate. So it all happened the other day. Um, it was a moment of events that left me thinking for days about our actions and, and the positive and negative interactions we have in life. So I was sitting in the park watching Bo, my daughter, play and out of the corner of my eye I spotted a mum. And she was typing away on her phone. Her son was close by playing on the seesaw. And he got off and, and my eyes watched closely as he ran. He almost fell, which is, is what made me look in the first place. But he ran up to his mum and gave her the biggest cuddle he could muster. It was just the sweetest thing I had ever seen. This big smoochy kiss. And, and it was just such a beautiful moment that I couldn't help but, you know, oh, how sweet, and, you know, go back to looking at my child and making sure she wasn't, you know, falling and breaking a bone. But, you know, the kid ran away. He went over to the slides or whatever, and, and you know, I watched her as this all happened. I watched her put her phone away in her pocket as this cuddle took place, and, and the kiss, and I watched her almost melt as, as he kissed her cheek and then ran off, and she sort of stood there smiling briefly, and... And then she, you know, pulled her phone back out of her pocket and went back onto Instagram or to text or email or read the news, whatever it was she was doing. And I couldn't help but think, like, what a sweet moment. You know, the cuddle and the time that this child took away from his play to show the affection that he had to his mum. And, you know, it was just such a sweet little five-second moment. It was beautiful. So this got me thinking about memories. Would that moment, that tiny little insignificant moment in time, be plastered into her memory for the rest of her life? And I thought, probably not. You know, it was so short. I don't know, maybe it would. But then I thought, imagine if the story was flipped. What if her son had run over and kicked her in the shin? I know, aggressive, right? But she would have been mad. She would have been upset. She would have yelled at him. She probably would have taken him home, as you would if your child randomly got aggressive with you. Then she would have got home and she would have told her husband or the, the child's father. You know, the whole incident would have been replayed. Why did he do it? He's so naughty. And, and she would have dwelled on it and thought about it, you know. Is my child harboring aggression towards me because I sent him to kindy yesterday? Or is he angry by nature? Or, or does he hate me? You know, just natural things you would think if your child randomly did something naughty or, or even regularly did something naughty. So due to the amount of thought and action taken on the second incident, the kick, as opposed to the cuddle, this would have been stored in the mother's mind as a memory. And the son would have copped an earful, and that also would have been stored in his memory. The yelling and the words like naughty and no would have been imprinted in his mind. And, you know, some kids may take this as attention and store it for the future when they weren't feeling noticed. But at the end of the day, I'm here to talk about the mother in this situation. And she would have remembered that moment, that day, that feeling, and she would subconsciously play it back whenever she was feeling maybe a little bit insecure about her child's love or worrying if he'll you know, wake up and be good today or grow up to be a good boy. So back to the cuddle, what really did happen. You know, that probably didn't receive any praise from the mother. 
you know, it it was beautiful, but she wasn't really going to get in the car and be like, you know, that was such a beautiful cuddle, you were such a good boy. She probably wouldn't have told the dad when he got home from work that night because it was such a short moment in time that probably happened often. You know, he was probably a really affectionate boy. He probably gave her cuddles all the time. So that moment, while really sweet and touching in those few seconds that it occurred, it seemed quite insignificant. And what happened is it would have been a short-term memory and it wouldn't have been stored. It probably wouldn't really have been thought of again. So do you see where I'm going with this? Now, I'm really guilty of this. I will call my mum once in a blue moon and tell her that Bo has been so naughty today and I'm never going to have another child because children are really hard work and I can only ever deal with one and her misbehaving at the markets or refusing to get dressed one morning when I'm just like not in the mood really tugs at me and, and I'll dwell on it for longer than I should. And then I can totally see how if I didn't have a practice of gratitude and if I wasn't so mindful of my moods, I could easily slip into that mindset of negativity way more often than I do. So let me explain to you how we learn to make this story make a little bit more sense to you. Do you ever notice that when you read a book or watch a movie, there's like a section or a scene that will really resonate with you? You'll sort of think about it and dwell on it and maybe get a little deeper and, and put it into your own life. And, and that memory sort of sticks. Like suddenly, you know, you can recite that sentence from that book or you could reenact the whole movie scene word for word. And sometimes that memory will pop up years and years after actually reading or watching it. And the reason for that is because time creates memories. So that fleeting moment won't stick in your head unless you think about it for a period of time afterwards. You don't think about every single face you see in a day or even just at the supermarket. But you might remember that one cute guy because maybe you daydreamed about him for the rest of the afternoon. I know, I'm married, but we're all guilty of it sometimes. But it happens. You may see someone and you may create like a little bit of an innocent fantasy in your head about this person, and then the memory sticks. And if you see that person again, you're going to remember them because you created a memory in your head, because you put effort into that face, into that thought. Whereas you'll see a hundred other faces that day and you wouldn't recognize them if you saw them five minutes later because you went, looked at them and went straight on to the next thing. You didn't create a memory. So what I'm trying to say is when something good happens, whether it be a cuddle from your child or a loving text from your partner or a really awesome car park at the movies, don't just let it pass you by. Sit on it and think about it. Have actual gratitude for it. Notice the feeling and take note of the smells and the sights and what's happening around you while you're feeling it. And really store this goodness in your mind. Then when something bad happens, something that you would dwell on, someone mentions something at work that doesn't sit right with you and you think about it all afternoon and you really create a story around it, don't let that happen. Realize what it is, take it in in the moment and move on and put your energy towards the good, the things that happen that we don't think about, that we don't put effort into. And then what can happen is you can sort of crowd out these memories of your less than ideal childhood and that time you had your heart broken or how you were called fat once. You know, you fill your mind and your subconscious with those small moments that would normally pass you by and you can begin to dwell on the good as opposed to spending your time focusing on the bad and creating long-term stored memories from it. And one thing I can promise you is that when you have a mind full of abundant, happy memories, then the low points are so much easier to handle. I've coached dozens of women through this and their lives completely change from the inside while looking almost exactly the same 
from the outside. And that is my goal for you. That's my goal for everyone who reads what I write, listens to what I say, or, or coaches with me, or does my program. I want you to learn that by changing your mind, you can actually completely change your life. And then the good things happen. You start to manifest these amazing things because you're vibrating at this level of positivity and suddenly, you know, people are more attracted to you. Opportunities are attracted to you and, and you let the good in. And even if there are low points or bad days or tantrums in supermarkets, it doesn't sink in. So if you're currently sitting at work and you're dreading a meeting that's coming up or you're avoiding an email that you don't want to read, just don't let it sink in. Get it over with, move past it and find something that you can do that will create a positive long-term stored memory in that mind of yours. And I promise you, if you get yourself into the habit of doing this regularly and really focusing on the moment, taking 60 seconds when something amazing happens to actually let it sink in, you will feel so much better from the inside. I can't even tell you. And it's how I live my life and I can promise you, you know, as my loyal readers will know, I've had my fair share of ups and downs. My life has been far from perfect, especially over this last year. But if I didn't have that mental strength and the ability to let things pass me by, to feel them and respect them, but then let them pass me by, I would have broken. And I almost did a few times, but I had that strength. It's like a muscle, you gotta work it. I had that strength to come back. And that's exactly what I want for you. So if you wanna read more, if you are interested, you please head to my website, www.thegratitudeproject.com. Google it, it's much easier than typing all those words in. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I only have a few spaces left for the year and I would love to chat to you. I'm doing free consultations at the moment so you can sign up. I'll give you a call, we'll chat for half an hour, see if it's for you. If not, we got to have a little soul chat and if it is, your life may be about to change for the better. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate more than anything your time logging on, listening to me. Um, if you enjoyed this, please comment below. I love to know what you guys think of, of what I'm saying. Share it with a friend if you think that they would relate. And have a beautiful day. I can't wait to chat to you again soon here. Bye.